Before the Chappaquiddick incident, Ted Kennedy, the ambitious brother of JFK and RFK, was eyeing the presidency. However, on July 18, 1969, tragedy struck when Kennedy drove his car off a bridge, leaving his passenger, Mary Jo Kopechna, trapped inside as it sank. Instead of immediately seeking help, Kennedy brought only two trusted friends, and after failing to rescue her, they left without notifying anyone. It wasn't until the next day that Kopechny's lifeless body was discovered. Kopechny's body was discovered by locals the day after the accident, positioned in a way that suggested she had fought for survival. However, despite the suspicious circumstances surrounding her death, no autopsy was performed, leaving unanswered questions about the cause of her death and potential pregnancy. The Chappaquiddick incident had a devastating impact on Ted Kennedy's political aspirations. Despite his family's political legacy, the incident, with its questionable details, delayed notifications, and intense media scrutiny, severely damaged his credibility and popularity with American voters. When he later ran for the presidential nomination against Jimmy Carter, the incident was prominently featured in debates and news stories, ultimately leading to his loss and the end of his presidential ambitions. Despite the constant satire and ridicule, Ted Kennedy remained a senator until his death, with his constituents in Massachusetts seemingly unfazed by the Chappaquiddick incident. Despite losing his role as Senate Majority Whip, Kennedy comfortably won re-election every six years and became the third longest continuously serving U.S. Senator in history. The Chappaquiddick Island Party held on January 18th was organized to honor the hard work of the Boiler Room Girls, talented young female campaign workers who had supported Robert F. Kennedy. Ted Kennedy, eyeing a presidential run, hoped to persuade them to stay involved in politics, but the media focused on the fact that the party consisted of unmarried women and married political men failing to recognize their dedication to their careers. The media unfairly focused on the fact that all the women at the party were unmarried, despite their roles as campaign workers. However, what truly stood out was the large amount of alcohol brought to the island for the supposedly quiet campaign party with Kopechny's blood alcohol level indicating she had consumed a significant amount. Combined with Kennedy's history of infidelity and the reported rowdiness of the night, this painted a damaging picture for the senator. Kennedy's team claimed that he was taking Kopechny to her hotel due to her feeling unwell, but this explanation was quickly debunked. Kopechny left her belongings at the party, indicating she intended to return, and Kennedy drove towards a secluded beach instead of the ferry, as he had initially stated. An off-duty police officer and a resident both witnessed Kennedy's car speeding away from the road to the beach after midnight, further challenging his version of events. Ted Kennedy explained that he mistakenly drove down the wrong road towards the infamous bridge over Poucha Pond, where his car ended up overturning and sinking. Despite the challenging currents and murky water, Kennedy, a skilled swimmer, attempted to rescue Kopechny but ultimately swam a mile back to his hotel after failing to retrieve her with his friends. As Senator Kennedy made his way back from the accident, he passed by several homes where he could have sought assistance for Kopechny. The closest of these homes, Dyke House, was only 150 meters away and had a working telephone that could have been used to call for help. However, Kennedy chose not to inform the entire party about the incident and instead approached his close friends, Joe Gargan and Paul Markham, for their assistance. 
Instead of seeking help from the nearby homes or his own party goers, Senator Kennedy discreetly approached his trusted friends, Joseph Gargan and Paul F. Markham, to confess his actions and ask for assistance. Together, they hurried back to the accident site in search of Mary Jo Kopechny. After their unsuccessful attempts, the three lawyers gathered at a public phone booth near the ferry landing to discuss their next steps, with Gargan and Markham urging Kennedy to immediately report the incident to the authorities. Kennedy agreed before plunging into the water and swimming back to his hotel in Edgartown. After failing to save Kopechny, Kennedy instructed his cousin and a friend to go back to the party and remove the women from the island. He asked them not to inform Kopechny's friends about her death, fearing it could lead to further tragedy. Both men agreed, assuming Kennedy would alert the authorities, but when they returned to the party, they lied about Kopechny's whereabouts. The morning after the incident, Ted Kennedy returned to Chappaquiddick as if nothing had happened. Instead of reporting the accident to the authorities, he complained about a loud party at the hotel and engaged in casual conversation about a sailing race. When his friends arrived and realized he hadn't called the authorities, there was a heated conversation in his hotel room. Kennedy seemed to believe that his friends would arrive in the morning with news that Mary Jo Kopechny had miraculously survived. He made multiple phone calls, but none of them were to the authorities. Instead, he sought advice from lawyers and friends, still unaware of the gravity of the situation. After being informed by a local about a deceased girl found in his car, Senator Kennedy made his way to the Edgartown Police Station around 10 a.m. on July 19th, approximately 10 hours after the incident. He provided a statement to Paul F. Markham, who then handed it over to the chief of police, insisting that it not be made public. Senator Kennedy faced immediate scrutiny for not reporting the accident to authorities, leading to rampant speculation about his actions. To defend himself, Kennedy claimed that his behavior was a result of a head injury and shock, a narrative that was reinforced by his legal team and his decision to wear a neck brace at the funeral. Throughout his life, Kennedy consistently relied on the defense of being in shock and confused by a head injury denying any involvement of alcohol and attributing his actions to a jumble of emotions. Kennedy was never charged with manslaughter. The Edgartown police chief, James Arena, recognized him as one of the Kennedys, accepted his written statement, and held off releasing it to the press until he was forced to do to media scrutiny. Arena filed a charge of fleeing the scene of an accident, but with no autopsy or thorough investigation, there was insufficient evidence for a manslaughter charge. Kennedy pleaded guilty to leaving the scene and received the lightest possible sentence, which was further suspended, taking into account his spotless record and the public backlash he would face. Ted Kennedy advised by his high-profile legal team, remained silent for six days after the accident, fearing that speaking publicly would expose any inconsistencies in his story. However, due to the negative media coverage, Kennedy was eventually compelled to address the nation, delivering a speech that denied any immoral behavior, claimed he had not been drinking, and attributed his actions to shock and brain damage. The investigation into the Chappaquiddick incident was so riddled with inconsistencies and unanswered questions that an inquest was held five months later. The inquest found that Ted Kennedy's actions contributed to the death of Mary Jo Kopechny, but despite the substantial findings, no warrant was ever issued for his arrest and no further legal actions were pursued against him.